because after foster care too, they don't really prepare you for the outside too much. I mean, I like I, I got sent out on my ass sleeping under bridges and shit. I had two weeks to find a place and move out, or I would be out and homeless because the state only allows you to be in group home setting two weeks after you're 18. My dad was in prison before I was born. I never met him, and uh, my mom committed suicide when I was 15. Probably my first placement I ever really had, group home-wise. I remember it, it kind of came as a shock. Um, I wasn't told I was going there. I was living with some foster parents at the time, and I was told that we were looking for a friend's house. We pulled over and I remember my foster dad telling me that I was going to live in this place and it was called a group home and I had to go in there now. I remember sitting in a chair and almost feeling, chair just pretty close to like this, and I remember feeling like I was falling out of the chair the whole time. Then as you move on and keep moving and keep moving. It's raw and it's cold and it's harsh and it'll hit you hard. We have to get serious about expecting that children who are removed from their families due to abuse or neglect referrals, that the primary intervention done with them is to connect them into healthy, safe, and permanent relationships. It makes us feel worse. It makes us feel like we're even less wanted. Our parents didn't want us. Now you're giving this guy my file because you're sick of dealing with me. And nobody just invests the time and sits and, and, and listens and cares. It's not a fallacy of 18. It's the fallacy that the state can be an effective parent. The state's a terrible parent. I did not have a normal childhood. I moved all the time. The system can never provide real love, real heart-bonded love like a mother has, or a father for that matter. I'd have all these intense relationships, looking for that thing, whatever it is. That's something that's solid and doesn't move and that you trust in. Human beings are very deeply geared towards attachment. So you cannot tolerate being just flecks of dust traveling through the universe. And we need to be connected. And so people are always seeking connection to something or another. And of course, our most natural connection system are our families. And so we will hang out with people uh, who give us a sense of connectedness, even if those people hurt us. I just wish somebody would have assured me that you do belong and you are part of this family. I know they did their best. It really sucks that they had hard lives and that they didn't have good coping mechanisms, that they had addiction problems, and that my mom was undiagnosed, just not mentally healthy. Children need stability, and I guess that's something I didn't quite have. It was never my choice to move anywhere. I was told, you're going here or you're going there. I have a hard time connecting with people on a real level. Like, I, it's always surface, and that all started with feeling the way I felt being moved from place to place. It's easier to not care about someone and then leave. We move them from a situation of risk to one of danger when we place them into these temporary systems. That's just made worse when temporary becomes forever. My last foster family was great. They totally, I was a, a broken little girl, but they also promised me too much because in the end, it wasn't a consistent relationship, you know? what every kid wants is for somebody to say, I don't care what you do, I don't care how bad you act, you're going to be in this house and you're going to be grounded and you're going to learn your manners and you can do whatever you want and you're, no, you're not going anywhere. So the way I was raised, it doesn't happen like that. The worse you act out, the worse place you get sent to, the more places you get sent to. Get that child with a family member that loves and cares and when the going gets tough, won't say, I'm sorry, this place is disruptive, put them somewhere else or I want to go on vacation, put him somewhere else, or I have too many of my own kids, or my husband had a heart attack, or I'm getting divorced, put him somewhere else. That doesn't happen in a biological family. The family unit's a family unit, so we want families to raise kids. Somebody should have taken the time to find me a family that would have stuck with me. Find me one placement that's gonna work. Find me the one placement so I don't have to go through 13. The question isn't who would take your kids today, the question is, how big is your family? 
I have to figure out who's going to walk me down the aisle someday. So one of the things I said I would do was just run a report to see if we could get contact information for a man who you think might be your Correct. dad, based yes. on information. And I and I did do that, and I do have that report. Okay. Please tell Department of Florida District Court, Fourth Judicial District, in for the County of Missoula, State of Montana, is now in session. The Honorable Douglas Harkin presiding. First matter today is State versus Baldwin. What happened? I got out of jail today. I was in there for like uh, two and a half, three months. I was born weighing three pounds and some hot ounces. I was born a crack baby. If we don't prioritize and support the development of these youth having lifelong relationships with loving people who are safe in their lives, they pay a price across their lifespan. You know, like I, I don't, I don't want to be in jail. And it was never my plan. I didn't grow up thinking, oh, I'm gonna grow up in jail. You know what I'm saying? But. Like life has this little twist and bump, you know, so I'm gonna try my hardest to stay out of jail, but. Youth who age out of America's foster care system, while it's only about 30,000 a year, have a disproportionate impact on public health and public safety. Seventy percent of, of the children of youth who age out of foster care system end up in foster care themselves. something that we all pay a price for. But I hope I don't mess up again, so. We set out to design the worst possible child welfare system. It would look like the system we have. I actually am not sure why they were not contacted. I would have done better living with, you know, just whether I knew them or not, they were family, you know, just that concept of getting to know your family, like, I, I don't know my grandma at all. In our current system, it is not likely that if you had a family member go into foster care that you would ever know about it, unless someone in your family told you about it, the government would never call you. The police officers, the hospital, the school, the next door neighbor reports a dysfunctional parent and children at jeopardy. The agency shows up too often in the middle of the night and takes the kids. Trauma that the kids will remember till they die. Place the child here, not working out, here, there, back again. One sibling in one home, one sibling in the other home, a third sibling in a, in a third home. How often do they get to see their mom if they're lucky? Once every 30 days. How often do they see their siblings if they're lucky? Once every 30 days. Have they changed schools? Yes. Have they changed neighborhoods? Yes. Have they changed churches? Yes. They've changed everything trauma that the child will take to their grave. On their deathbed, they'll have some recollection of that terrible moment when they're torn from their siblings, torn from their mom. I don't care how bad she is, they love her, and sent off on this journey. The last time I saw her up until a couple years ago was, I think it was six. I started talking to her shortly after my 18th birthday. Still to this day, I don't remember my mom's face at all. I don't remember what she looks like at all. I think it was frustrating and painful at the same time to know that my mom wasn't there. And it's just kind of cool to notice our similarities and know that, you know, my mom is just like me. 80% of children who the state has taken away from their family, even at birth, so they have no recollection, age one or two, 80% on her 18th birthday, get out, go on a quest to find their family. Honestly, that that's what's gonna make me happy someday, as a wife. I need one. <laughs> mm. I am sad, I am depressed, I am lonely, my heart hurts, I mean, even right now. I just, I don't feel good, ever. That, that's it, that's just it, that's all I have. 
That's all I can do, that's all I can be, that's all I can say about myself is that I'm not a liar and I'm not a thief. I buy flowers for girls, dude. <laughs> for real. Sometimes when I play with fire, I get burnt. When I chase girls, I get broken hearted and in another state. <laughs> some generations of kids, but we've got to take care of the next generation. How we care for young people in this country really defines the strength of us as a country, and it matters.